Hello guys, Cybernary here. Welcome back to part two of our Extra Utilities Mod Pack Spotlight. Uh, on the last episode we went over several of the cosmetic blocks that Extra Utilities gives us, like the, uh, the different stone brick and glass blocks that we can make using Extra Utilities. Uh, in this episode we're going to go over several of all the generators that uh, Extra Utilities gives us along with touching on uh, the iron chest and inner, block, uh, inner storage blocks that, uh, that we can make. So that I'll specify which ones are not part of extra utilities as we get to them. But first off, I wanted to start on some of these storage blocks that we've got over here. Let's start with the drum. Uh, a drum, like you can see here, uh, will hold uh, up to 256 buckets of any liquid and it's made very simply uh, those are that's a pressure weighted pressure plate a heavy one uh, and it's made from two of those a cauldron and six iron ingots uh, the beauty of this is that you can have a drum for all kinds of different stuff so if you needed a bucket of water you could have a water drum uh, and all you'd have to do, well, I say that. Okay, maybe it, well, it's pulling it out, but it's not giving it to me. Maybe it's because I'm getting creative. Let's try um, switching back over real quick. And, y yep, if you just right click on it, it will pull a bucket out of the, uh, the water drum. Now, if I wanted lava, I could come over here and pull a bucket of lava out. Those of you who are using Tinker's Construct can store any of your molten, molten liquids in the drum as well for further storage. So this is a kind of a nice little addition for uh, a lot of storage of liquids. 256 buckets is quite a bit and it'll take a while before you can uh, empty one of those drums out. Now when you build it, it's only it's, it comes as an empty drum. You have to fill it yourself. So. Uh, next up is a filing cabinet. The nice thing about this is that it will hold items that don't stack. So if you were to pick up a whole bunch of records or a whole bunch of saddles or something like that, you could dump it into this and it would store it all uh, up to um, 128, I believe, uh, and basically stacks them all into that, that one ch chest. Now there's an, there's an upgraded version uh, that's doubles the amount okay yeah this was 256 this is 512 and this one will allow you to store different items so if you want to throw all your swords and and um, bows and all and all the, your weapons and tools that don't uh, don't stack you could toss them all in here and uh, and be able to, to get them now this block right here is called magic wood and uh, if I could pick it I can't pick it um, Oh, because I'm not in creative. Uh -huh. So, uh, this block here is called Magic Wood, and we'll get into uh, how to make that a little bit later on in the mod pack. In fact, it'll probably be in part three or four. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, you, the, you need uh, three filing cabinets and six of the magical wood. This is just three chests and six iron. And last, we, lastly down here, we've got ourselves a trash can. The trash cans are very, very helpful. Uh, I've got at least one in my base, and it's just a chest, some cobble, and some smooth stone. And any item that you want to place in here basically just gets removed from the game, destroys. Uh, you can also connect it up using pipes and filters, and those that's something else that we'll be going over in future episodes is all the pipes and filters that we can, we can uh, do with uh, extra utilities. All right, so moving on, this whole line down, down the row here is what are called generators. And they pr produce a power called RF power. Uh, and it's from uh, another redstone mod um, that the name escapes me at the moment. But uh, wherever it says that it makes RF, then that's the kind of power that it generates. It's the redstone power over here that's um, uh, 50,000 RF is its, is its uh buffer so um, each of these requires a different kind of fuel to generate that power and as we get further on into the mod the, you'll see different machines that require power to operate 
um, and you you can use any of these mach any of these generators from this mod pack to generate that power. Uh, I've got I, the demos that I've got set up use a specific type of generator, but you can use any of these to generate power. Some of them have some of them generate a lot of power, but they're quite expensive. Others generate very little power because the rarity of the fuel that the generator uses uh, to generate that power. So the very first one we've got here is the culinary generator. And it's actually an upgrade from the survivalist generator. So let's go to the survival generator first. I should have put that one first. But in the list of where everything's at on my uh, NEI screen, uh, this one was one of the last ones, probably because it's alphabetized. So this is the survivalist generator. This is probably one of the first ones that you'll make uh, if you're if you're progressing, if you need power right away. It requires cobble, an iron ingot, a furnace, and two redstone. And it takes the exact same fuel as a furnace does. You can put coal in here, you can put wood in here, um, whatever you like, and it will start generating power as it's burning that fuel. Um, you can put blaze rods, you can put a bucket of lava in here, and it'll generate fuel. But uh, again, it's probably, it's not very it's not very fast as you can see and it's uh, but it's a very basic generator so that's one of the starting generators that you, that uh, that you can build now the culinary generator that was down here is basically an upgrade from that and as you can see here in the middle it requires a survivalist generator to build uh, you also add on some more iron and what this does is this takes any kind of food source and burns it to make a uh, redstone power. So if I was to go in here and grab me some uh, cooked steak then I could drop that in and it would start burning that cooked steak and making RF power. Now as you can see how fast that's growing it's generating power a lot quicker than a survivalist generator. So that's something to think about. Some, uh, some machines that you build may require more power uh, than what a survival generator can provide. So, now the thing to re remember about uh, this generator is the saturation of the the food that you put in there uh, means that it will burn for longer. But, however, f the more filling the food you give, the the more power you'll get out of it. So, I put steak in. That's probably one of the more filling foods, and I got I'm getting quite a bit of power out of it. But it's about time to burn out and it's going to top off right there at 76,000 so uh, moving on our next generator is called an ender generator it's probably one of the more expensive ones to build requires five ender eyes or three ender pearls two eyes and a block of iron uh, it's very very efficient and you can use pearls eyes or lilies to generate power using this this generator uh, moving on, we've got a furnace generator. Uh, this is kind of an upgraded from the survival generator. It also uses the same fuels as the furnace, but but at much, much better outputs. Uh, as you can see, this is much faster than the survival generator, and it's probably much more efficient than the survival generator. Uh, all right, here we've got a one that I did not put a, a name up top. That's my mistake. This is the heated redstone generator. Um, now this uses a combination of lava and redstone to generate power. So you'll need lava coming into it, but you also need redstone. And it's, I believe it's basically burning redstone to create power. Uh, the, all, the other benefit to this generator is that if you have Tinker's Construct and you're um, smelting down redstone, this will run off liquid redstone. This is the high temp furniture generator. Uh, this takes a furnace generator uh, and upgrades it even further. And the difference between this and a furnace generator is that the longer this one is running, uh, meaning the longer you have fuel in it, the hotter it gets and the more efficient it becomes. Uh, now this here is probably one of my favorites, the lava generator. It's just a basic generator that takes lava that, that you can either pour in using a bucket or you can pipe in and it generates RF output. It's a little bit more expensive than some of the others. Five gold, an iron block, but uh, it's since lava is fairly easy to find, 
uh, even if you wanted to get a bucket or a barrel of lava, you could hook that up to this, and it would sit there and churn through all that lava as it outputs power. One of the uh, most powerful generators in the Monfac is called the Nether Star Generator. Uh, as you can see, this one is probably the most expensive for Witherhead skull, Skulls, a Wither Star, an Iron Block, and of course our two Redstone and Furnace. Uh, this one eats Nether Stars. It is very efficient, it's very, very powerful, and excuse me, forgot to silence my phone. Um, if I was to pull up another star here, I'll just make sure that doesn't happen again, and drop another star into the nether star generator, you can see how fast that is. And it's going to generate that kind of power for the next two minutes at that speed. So if I needed um, a lot of power very quickly, then that's the way to do it. Now, I currently don't know anything in the game the, in Cybercraft that we're using that requires that kind of power, but I know that there's a lot of other things in other mod packs that use RF power where this would come in very handy. Uh, this is our pink generator. For those on who really like everything that's pink, this will take pink dye, it'll take pink wool, it'll take pink uh, flowers, anything that is pink or uses pink dye. Uh, will be consumed by this generator and output RF. So, moving on. Potions generator. This one is uh, also kind of expensive, but it gives you the ability to drop potions in here. Uh, the more complex or multi-level the potion is, then the longer or more power this generator is going to give you. So, if you were to Think about it this way. An awkward potion requires one nether wart. So that's going to give you basically one level of power. If you add uh, a, a spider eye to that potion, then that's two levels. Uh, and so on and so forth. So some of the more complex potions that are four and five uh, ingredients, those will give you the most power using this, um, using this generator. This is a solar generator. By far probably the most, most expensive with nine diamonds. Uh, the nether star one might compete with that, but nine diamonds is quite a bit. The benefit to this is that you can put it outside and it'll just generate power. In fact, it's already charged up. Now, the, the drawback to this is that it can't charge while it's distributing energy. Um, and it can't, well, on, the, on the flip side, it can't send energy while it's charging. So, if you've got something that runs at night, and only at night, and you want this thing, this sucker charging up during the day, then that may be perfect for you because that's a no, no fuel alternative to generating RF. We've got our survivalist that we talked about before, and lastly, our TNT generator because it, anybody out there who has a mob farm that has tons of gunpowder and don't know what to do with it. Here's a generator for you. Now, they do say be careful because the TNT that's going off inside the generator to p produce the power is not contained by the generator. So it will destroy items in uh, an area around the generator. So if that's something that you want to build and works for you for your power needs, then by all means, go ahead and build one. All right, so moving on over here to... Uh, to the other smaller mods that we are uh, showcasing on this video. These are from the mod Ender Storage and we probably will be spending quite a bit of time explaining how uh, this mod works um, uh, in, in the game because it can be quite complicated. When you use the Ender Storage mod it replaces Ender Chests, uh, the vanilla Ender Chests with these and we also have ender tanks and we have ender pouches um, and so I'll get into those in a minute the difference between this ender chest and the vanilla ender chest is that this has different combinations that you can use represented by these three wool right up here and you can have I believe it's over 40,000 different combinations because these wools can be dyed different colors to have a different combination. So right now 
I've got a red, white, and green um, chest here with nothing in it. Now, if I come around here and I see I've got a diamond, cactus green, and rose over here, this is a white chest. White, white, white. So this chest and that chest are not synced. Now, if I was to change the combination on this one to the same thing, then that chest is the same. Why, uh, none, none of the items are here, none of the items are here. If I was to put a stack of diamonds in here, they would show up in both. But, if I was to switch this back to white, 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 this chest now has the original items that are in it. So, you need to always think about the fact that there, while there's any items in the chest, even if the chest doesn't exist, the items are still there and as soon as somebody makes that chest with that color combination they'll be able to retrieve those items. Um, now inner tanks are basically the same thing except they use liquids. So I have uh, liquids over here to show you. Let's, uh, I meant to put this closer. Uh, let's see if this will work. I'm going to put a, an inner tank right there. Um, no, I guess not. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to put it over here. I'm going to grab uh, one of my buckets. I'm going to switch back over into survival. And you can in, uh, add a bucket to your, your ender uh, tank. There's another bucket, and I think it'll hold up to 10 buckets. Now, since this is a white, white, white ender tank, I can come over here, and this is the exact same ender tank. It's, it's the same liquid that I put in that one is also now over here in this one. You can use these with pipes as well, and that's what this dial right here is for. Red is for output, and blue is for input. So if you were to set up a pipe between this water drum and that inner chest, you'd want it on uh, blue to receive the water and then if you wanted a pipe that would come out of this one to something else then you would want that on red for output and again these are all color coded based on the wool that's on the top so you can have uh, up to more than 40,000 different combinations considering all the different dyes that are out there now one of the other things that you need to remember is that even though 40,000 combinations is a lot you might be on a server like Sidecraft where you want to ensure that no one's going to be able to stumble across your uh, combination. You know, I've got a whole stack of diamonds in here. What's the chance that someone uses red, white, green for themselves and finds my diamonds? They could steal them if they wanted. Hopefully not, but the way that you can ensure that this chest remains yours is by taking a diamond and clicking it on the handle. Now you'll lose the diamond. I kept it because I'm in creative. Uh, but now if I go into this you'll see this chest is registered to me. And that that color combination is... If somebody was to create a color combination that wasn't linked to me then um, let's say we go ahead and create green, white, red here this one's not linked to anybody because it doesn't have a diamond handle. So I open that up, there's nothing in here. I look over here, which is registered to me, and it's not there either because... What happened? I pulled the diamonds out. No? You can remove the diamond by shift right clicking and there's the diamonds red white green oh see I messed up the color combination I did green white red so if I had done that now they're synced okay now if I grab that diamond that I pulled out pull out my 64 diamonds because you, you always want to pull everything out before you make any kind of changes because basically you're changing this from being a public red white green to a private Red, red, white, green. So now it's a private red, white, green. If I come over here, this public red, white, green doesn't show anything. The private red, white, green, which is keyed to my user name, still shows my diamonds. And the tanks are the exact same way. So if I had 
a white red white tank as you can see that instantly changed from the water but I'm also gonna change well, see I've got to pull the water out now but I'm in creative so the water is just going away and I changed that to red but I want this one to be on the private network so I'm gonna click on it with the diamond and that is now registered to my name this one's not unless I do that apply a diamond to it so if I was to start transferring liquids from this water drum back over here it would connect to that one because it's on the private network and it has the same color combination as this one now if you start thinking about the different possibilities that you can do with this and some of the other machines that we look into in the future you'll see the possibilities are endless with these kind of ender, ender chests and ender tanks um, you can have uh, liquids that exist in two different areas of your base at the exact same time. You can have 10 buckets of lava uh, on one side and 10 buckets of lava on the other and have access to, ha access to those uh, anywhere you go. Now, the third part of this mod is the ender pouch. And I, I haven't really talked about the recipes. I'm, I assume you're... You can see them here as you're looking. They are kind of expensive. They do require a little bit more than a vanilla. Um, that one requires a chest. This one requires a, uh, a cauldron. Now this is the inner pouch. And the benefit to an inner pouch is that you can, a you can access a inner chest using the inner pouch anytime you want. You don't have to actually be at the chest. Now you saw the recipe on how to make an inner pouch, but right now as you can see on the description or the icon, it has the same three dots of white, white, white. So if I was to open that up, you can see the things that we left in the white, white, white chest are still there. If I wanted to assign this to a specific color combination, I'd basically take this the chest using or take the pouch and shift right click the pouch on the chest, and as you can see. In the icon on my hotbar, it is now red, white, green. If I open this pouch up, it opens up that chest. Now again, that's a public red, white, green chest. This pouch is now linked to the public red, white, green combination. If I want it to, uh, to pull up the stuff that's in my private red, white, green chest, I need to shift right click on it and you'll see the, the little button on the flap turns into a diamond. When you go back, look at the little flap on the hot bar of the pouch. When I shift right click on this, you see how it kind of went dull? That's an ender pearl. If you shift right click on the on the private red, white, green, the the little uh, button on the flap turns into a diamond. So that's how you can tell. It's kind of subtle, but now if I open that up, I can see my 64 diamonds. So I hope that makes sense as far as how the ender, ender storage system works. Uh, you can have multiple pouches, you can have multiple chests, multiple tanks. You can have uh, an ender chest back at your base that's linked to your pouch and then when you go mining you can uh, drop all of your, your valuables into the pouch so that if you ever die what gets burned up in the lava is the pouch and not the valuables. So that's something to think about too. If you have a smeltery you can have a pouch that leads to an inner chest that the inner chest is sitting on top of a hopper and the hopper feeds into your smeltery so if your base is currently loaded with the uh, in the chunk is loaded then as soon as you're dropping ores into your inner pouch they could be starting starting to smelt right away so these are just some of the possibilities that you can do with inner storage and I encourage you to uh, to explore that that a little bit more because it is a very very powerful mod with very little parts so uh, the last part of this uh, video we're going to talk about iron chests iron chests are basically an upgrade to the traditional wooden chests and they start off with copper chests um, they're not much bigger than a regular one that's how you make a copper chest and then inside here there are also upgrades where you can make a upgrade and apply it to a wooden chest that's already full of items and you don't have to transpose the items between things so there'll be an upgrade 
for every single chest that we look at uh, on, in this mod. And if you have a wooden chest full of items and you don't want to pull it out to replace it, excuse me, replace it with one of these chests, you can just use the upgrade. So the upgrade re recipe is here. Uh, you just put it in your hotbar and right click on the chest that you want to change and it will upgrade the chest. It will be a little bit more expensive using the upgrade, but sometimes that's uh, it's a lot more uh, valuable and it's a time saver. So this is one of the first ones. It's a copper chest. It's not very much bigger than, than a regular chest. The iron chest this is the next one up and you can upgrade to an iron uh, from wood straight to iron if you'd like or you can upgrade from copper to iron so those are the recipes for those upgrades or if you just want to build an iron chest the next one up is gold this is uh, gives you by far more storage and here's the upgrade from iron to gold now one thing I will say is that you can't just build a wooden chest and go straight to gold you have to you have to stair step it up you have to build at least an iron chest first then you can take a, an iron chest and surround it in gold and make a gold chest same thing with this next one. This is the diamond chest. It's much, much bigger. There is a diamond chest upgrade or from gold to diamond. Uh, it doesn't require all those diamonds, just two. And again, if you already have the gold chest, you can just replace the ingot with, with the gold chest and it'll make a, a diamond chest. Uh, the next one up is a crystal chest. Now this one doesn't give any more storage than the diamond. The diamond is pretty much the max storage that this mod will give. The benefit to the crystal chest is it will show you when there are items inside of it. And there's the upgrade from diamond to crystal. Now the last one is the obsidian chest. Again, this is the same size as the diamond. And you can upgrade this from a diamond chest. The benefit to this one is that if uh, you have a lot of creepers, this chest is explosion proof. So if you have a lot of things that you want to save uh, and store securely, then that's the way to do it. Okay, guys, I know uh, I went on quite a bit on some of this stuff, and I hope it's been informative. Uh, this kind of wraps up part two of our ender, our, our extra utilities slash ender storage slash iron chests mod spotlight. Uh, in the next episode, we'll start going over some of the more uh, complicated things that you can do with extra utilities and automate using automation machinery and things like that. Until next time, I hope you guys enjoy. See you later.